by Stafford's old boss, Deke Slayton. Slayton had followed Alan Shepard's lead and had undergone a procedure that enabled him to fly again. His presence and that of the Soviet cosmonauts made Apollo Soyuz a fitting epilogue to the Apollo program. The race to the moon had been political, its hurdles technological, its triumphs communal. But the momentum that kept it going was scientific. The benefits of space exploration are near us every day, from computers to scratch-resistant sunglasses. Other dividends include laser cutters, high-speed data transfer systems, improved insulation, new lubricants, robots and synthesized speech, heat-resistant paints, spun glass fiber, fireproof materials, improved solar energy systems, metalized plastic packaging, and highway crash barriers, not to mention numerous medical advances and the microelectronics in most of our home appliances. What began as a race between opposing nations ended up improving conditions for all humanity. Everyone remembers Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon and the words he spoke. Few remember the final speeches just three and a half years later. The task of summing up the Apollo program fell to Gene Cernan as he stood on the surface of Earth's nearest neighbor. As I take my last step from the surface, back home for some time to come, but we believe not too long in the future, I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And as we leave the moon and Taurus Littrell, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return, with peace and hope for all mankind. One, two, mission. Right away, Houston. Thanks for good. I hear you have good pride. 130 Houston, we're in the blind and we'll go. 